In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can use Replit Agent and Notebook Elm in order to get stuck out of that YouTube limbo where you're not getting any views, you're not getting any subscribers. And just to be 100% clear with you, this isn't about some fancy automation that you can do with Notebook LM. It's not even any kind of unique SaaS idea that you're going to make with Replit Agent. You might even be upset at how simple the solution actually is. If you've been stuck at this point early in your YouTube channel where you're making videos, you're editing them, you're posting them, and you're not getting any views, literally all you're going to need to do is just start making videos on either Notebook LM or the Replit Agent. That's literally all you need to do right now in order to get your YouTube channel off the ground. Now that's the complete answer and now I'm going to spend a few minutes to explain to you why that strategy is going to work. And if you're in a journey similar to the one I was in a few months ago, then you're probably in the tech industry and at some point you decide to start your YouTube channel. Well, what did you decide to start making videos about? Maybe you thought it would be a good idea to do some coding tutorials, maybe some interview questions like lead code or maybe you hopped on the trend of ai and started talking about chat gpt or just maybe other stuff that's trending in tech and what did that result in well i'm sure as you found out by now you were getting no views no subscribers and no revenue now maybe you weren't shooting to get revenue with youtube ads but maybe you wanted this to increase your portfolio maybe you wanted some contract work or maybe you had some kind of ai agency that you were trying to show off your experience in in any case your youtube channel it's still basically non-existent because nobody's watching your stuff so why is this happening and why is the replit agent and notebook LMD answer for this. If you made the same assumption that I did when I started my YouTube channel, you probably thought that either coding tutorials or technical interview questions or AI was the thing that was trending because that was the stuff you were watching on your YouTube channel. So you thought, hey, if I make videos on this, it's definitely going to give use because everybody's looking into this. There is some truth to that assumption, but that's kind of where the error is in the assumption. Because while you were right about those things being trendy topics and being what people want to watch, yes, AI and all that cool stuff, high in demand, trending, and maybe you even made videos in areas of your expertise because of your technical background or the role you've had before. But where that's incorrect is that it's still quite a bit of a broad topic to just make videos solely on something like that. And also not only is it a very broad topic, but it's also something that has been covered by thousands of videos by thousands of creators. So there's already a high supply of those kind of videos. So you ended up making a video that was for a category that was already extremely saturated and also extremely competitive. Because think about it, if you're making a video on, you know, how to write your first hello world with python why is youtube going to show that to viewers looking at python tutorials while there's already hundreds of thousands of other videos with way many more views way more engagement and your youtube channel is barely on its first video it just doesn't really make sense so what you need to do and the reason why this strategy works is because rather than just starting with a broad topic like ai and making a video on that or making a video on something very generic that everybody has already made videos on you want to get down to a niche on that topic or even a sub niche around that topic and the reason why you're going to want to do this is because yes, you're still going to get the benefit of making a video on a topic that's already in high demand, something that's trending. It might still be in that area that you already have expertise or knowledge in, but now you're going to be targeting a specific audience. And also you're going to be making content around something that has low supply. Think of it this way. If you made videos around coding tutorials for Python, a programming language that everybody's looking up, everybody's learning. Sure, it seems intuitive that that might get views because it's on high demand. But again, Python is so easy to learn. It's very easy for any other developer to make videos on that. But however, if tomorrow a new programming language came out that everybody was talking about because it was going to be a whole new rage or whatnot, if you're the first person to make videos or to make a full tutorial on that, definitely you would get views because while people are looking for that content on YouTube and it's nowhere to be found, they're definitely going to direct traffic to the few suppliers that are there. And again, this is just basic supply and demand. And I know you might be wondering, well, how do we get down to finding a sub niche for that broad topic? Where do I even start? I'm also going to go through that with you. And it's this simple, very iterative workflow that you can follow where you're going to start with that really broad topic. Again, let's say you really want to do stuff on AI. You want to watch content from those creators that are already getting a lot of views, making videos about AI. And you're going to pay attention to what technologies they are using, what they're really talking about, but at a very very detailed level. You're also going to get feedback from the users that are commenting on their videos. They might be making a request for another technology or for another type of video. And then from here, you're going to pick 
that specific technology that you kind of saw there was a lot of interest in, maybe from users or maybe from the creator itself. But again, the goal here is to get down to something more specific. So let's say you looked up videos on AI. And again, one of those creators was talking about Google Colab or Google Colab notebooks. Well, now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to start looking at tutorials, videos, creators that are making videos around Google Colab notebooks and AI. Same thing. You're going to check out their content, see what they're making. You're going to look at the comments, see what users are asking for or see what they're really appreciating. And again, from there, you're going to pick another specific thing that you can look into. Because remember, we're trying to get away from the broad topic and we're trying to get into a more specific audience, a more specific topic that's in demand that is still being very highly requested and that there might not be a lot of supply in terms of content for that. And then how do we validate that? Well, you're going to use this amazing tool called vidIQ, which is completely free. It's literally a Chrome extension that you just click and install on your browser. You literally just go to the Google Web Store, as you can see right here, and then add it to your browser. I uh, added it here, so it just shows the option to remove. And once you install it, you're going to get this really nice layout on your YouTube page, and it's going to give a ranking to the keywords for you. Now you can see up here, I search for coding tutorials, and you can see here that the ranking is pretty low. It's giving a 34 out of 100, which is, of course, a super slow score. And we can see that while the search volume is pretty high, competition of people making content around them is even higher. So that means that Yes, it's a popular topic, but yes, it's also competitive for creators making content around this topic. Now, let's say we want to be a little bit more specific. Let's say we want to do Python tutorials. And here we get a 40 out of 100. That's a little bit better than 31. We still see that the volume fairly high in terms of search, but the competition is extremely high. So again, I know I'm guilty of this. I think I did like a Kotlin tutorial or something like that, and it just tanked and I was disappointed, obviously. But kind of like how we were seeing on a low graph here, right? We start looking into maybe coding tutorials, AI tutorials, once we saw the comments, once we read the user feedback, we saw that people kept asking about Google Colab, Google Colab tutorials. So let's see how that does, right? Google Colab. And we can see right here, this is doing significantly better than the other ones. There's a high volume on search and there's a low competition in terms of the content being made for that topic. Now, why is this? Well, if you know a little bit about Google Colab is yes, it's still Python coding, but a lot of people that code in Python don't necessarily use Google Colab. And there's probably a subsection of people that really want to learn how to code in Python using Google Colab only. So in you being specific about the kind of tutorial you're making, you're also curing a pain point for an audience that maybe feels like they're not getting enough of that content. And you start thinking like, hey, maybe I should make videos on that. Again, you can just use your vidIQ extension to validate whether that's a good idea to make a video around. And of course, the higher the score, the more likely that when you make that video, it's going to give you views. So now let's check something like we're talking about notebook LM. And look at that. That's an amazing score for a keyword in terms of YouTube search. That's at 81 out of 100. Again, super high volume in search and super low competition in terms of the content that's being made for this. And keep in mind that this is not always going to have such a good score because as time passes, more people are going to catch on, more people are going to make content. And of course, over time, people might lose interest too. So that's just going to be bringing the score down little by little. And let's check out that other one we're talking about, the Replit agent. And look at that 86 out of 100. That's pretty much at 90. So that's a super amazing score to have for something to make content around if you're in the tech industry if you're trying to get your YouTube channel started, and if you just don't really know how to get out of that limbo where you have no views, no subscribers. And if you're still wondering, Hector, I don't have time to be watching all these videos, watching all these content creators and trying to guess what a good keyword might be. I don't have time to be doing all this research. Well, I got good news for you. I actually made an automation that I posted the whole tutorial for. And this is an automation that I use for my one-on-one -on -one clients where it's literally a set of agents that's gonna scrape the YouTube data. It's gonna analyze the comments. It's gonna analyze the video transcript script and it's going to give you analysis and reports on what the most relevant keywords and topics from the videos are. So literally the research itself is also going to be done for you. Guys, I know exactly how much effort it takes to come up with a video idea, script it, go out of your way to record it and edit it, post it, and just how discouraging it can be to see it not get any views, not get any subscribers. It almost makes you feel like YouTube hates you. And that's why I made this video for you all that I know are trying very hard, no gatekeeping, even giving you some great keywords that you can use for your next YouTube video. If you have any questions, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can book a one-on-one -on -one video call with me completely free. I really hope that you found this video helpful and I'm really cheering for your YouTube journey. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.